we're still in chapter 16, section four, the illusion of reality. We're on page uh, 338, and we're on paragraph number seven. Now, last week we did a big recap because we had been gone again for a few <laughs> weeks from doing this. Um, and so we left off, I, I read paragraph number six, but to jump into what we're talking about, because in this section we're talking about special relationships. We're talking about special hate and special love relationships. And the whole focus of special relationships is to keep your attention in guilt, in your sense of unworthiness. Special hate relationships are easy to see. Those are the people we can't stand. Those are the things we can't stand. You know, those are the ideas we can't stand. And so we, we look at them and we get angry at them. And when we are angry at them, the anger has to come from somewhere. It comes from us. If they are so bad, if we attack them or feel violated by them, then we are weak. If we are weak, then guilt is real. If guilt is real, then God is dead, as the Course would say. Fear abides within you. That eternal holiness does not abide in you. Okay, so then it says what the ego loves to do, because it can't leave you there, although it would love to just leave you in suffering and misery. That's its goal. It says, well, okay, you can't stay there forever. You wouldn't stay with me if that's all I gave you. So I'm going to give you this special love relationship. That means if you can find this one person in the world or this one friend in the world or this special, you know, person, family, you know, sometimes families become our special relationship. We together can fight the foes of the world. Maybe it's a political thought system. You know, we, this, is, this is the one that's, that's helping us against all the things out there. But it is no different. It's fighting against something. If it's defending against something, something's weak, and that something becomes us because we need something to protect us against what's out there. And so our special love relationships, even though they look a little better than those special hate relationships, they are nothing more than keeping us locked into our feelings of unworthiness and guilt. And again, if guilt is real, then God is dead. And our eternal holiness, that flame that can really never go out, seems to be dim, seems to be extinguished. Something has happened, and we are all alone in this world. Now, the Course would say, neither one of those really help. And you go, then what do I do? Well, we allow them, kind of like Car Ray Karen did, we allow those illusions to be transformed into holiness. We do not have to throw away the special hate relationships, although you may want to. We do not have to throw away the special love relationships, but they can be transformed into, as the Course would say, holy relationships. It takes a little more effort, and it certainly takes help from the Holy Spirit, that internal truth, that Christ presence, love, the place of God within you, the voice for God within you, that eternal holiness that abides within you. You can't do it alone. When I married my husband, I inherited an ex-wife. I don't know, do you call it inherited? I adopted, I was given. I was blessed. I was married with an ex-wife. And it has been a challenge. Many a time I thought the world would be so much better if she were dead. <laughs> then I read an article. It was very spiritual, very honest. Uh, you know, I read an article once, one time that said, you will never have peace on earth until you make peace with your ex-spouse. And I thought to myself, well, that's a good example. So my experience has been that love is the answer. Now, I do not know how to, and I, I'm not even going to go into all the stories. I could tell you a lot of stories that you would agree with me about <laughs> her. I'm sure if any of us have spouses, exes, we might. Well, she's not even my ex. She's my my husband's ex, so it's an ex once removed. I don't know how you do that. An ex once removed. Anyway, an ex-in-law. There you go. I never thought of that. But I'm sure, you know, we all have our stories. But again, if she is bad, then I am unworthy and guilt reigns and God is dead. So I realized that this is not where I want to be. I don't want to be powerless. I, don't, I want to know my eternal holiness that abides within me. And so this is what this is talking about. All of these things come down to that sixth paragraph, which is your answer. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. This was said in the introduction to the text. It is still valid today. You're not out there looking for love. 
You're to look at everything that pisses you off. That's it. What's bugging you today? Because whatever's bugging you is the block to the awareness of love's presence. And if you let it bug you, then you are unworthy, you are guilty, and God is dead. That's really as blatant as it is. So is that what you believe? No, of course not. So it's time to move past it. It's time to look at this so it can be healed. It is not necessary to seek for what is true. You don't have to look for love. But it is necessary to seek for what is false, to look at what seems to be blocking you from the peace and the healing that you so desire. Every illusion is one of fear, whatever form it takes. And the attempt to escape from one illusion into another must fail. We will just keep trying special hate to special love. And then when that special love partner disappoints us, they'll become the one we hate. And then we'll move on to another one. You know, and we keep doing this until we see the insanity of what we're doing and stop. And let it be transformed into majesty, as the Course would say. It says, yet peace will never come from the illusion of love, but only from its reality. And that's why it needs to be transformed. It needs to be looked at and seen for what it is. Everything, according to the Course, is either an extension of love or a call for love. And our response is to give love. When people are extending love and are nice to us, it's so easy to see. Oh, I love you. You're so sweet. When people are calling out for love, like my ex-in-law, you know, it's harder to see that that's a call for love. But it is the same thing. You know, I always say, they don't even know what they're doing. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. It's what we know Jesus said. That was a very wise statement. You know, when a baby, when an infant is in your arms, you know how you get those, sometimes you get those little mittens that you put on little baby, baby's hands because their nails are kind of sharp and they'll, they'll scratch themselves. That's the whole point is they'll scratch themselves. Because infants... Uh, muscular system is not developed yet. So if you hold them, they'll sometimes just flail their little hands. They'll hit themselves in the face. And they'll sometimes hit you in the face. And I remember one time when Jeffrey was little, his little <laughs> hit me in the face. Well, what do we say when a, when a kid hits you in the face? How dare you? I'm just giving you love and you hit me in the face. You ingrate. Is that what you say? No, you go what? You laugh. Just what you're doing now. Oh, how cute. Your cute little hands, they're just learning how to do everything. Isn't that adorable? You're just so cute, you know? But how about when they get, these babies get bigger bodies and they start flailing out in metaphorical ways? It's not so cute anymore, is it? But it is the same action. Those, they know not what they are doing. And so we cannot sit there and judge them from our perspective because Jesus didn't even do it. I think he would have a better perspective to judge from than us, and yet he would not even do it. He said, no, forgive them. Why? Because what we said tonight, eternal holiness abides in them. And that those blocks that I am holding onto about them are making me feel unworthy, guilty, and showing me that God is dead. And I don't want that anymore. That is not my goal. <laughs>